Hey guys, this is Trista with Tried and True by Trista. If you're new around here, what we like to do on my channel is try new crafting techniques and make all the things. Hopefully by watching you can shorten your time frame, your learning frame for when you're trying to figure out how to do a new project. So that's why we're here and I'm so happy to have you. If you like the video and you want to see more, give me a thumbs up so I know what you like and what you don't. And be sure and hit the subscribe and the bell notification so you don't miss any videos in the future. All right, so today we are doing paint pouring. Yes, this was my inaugural run. So believe it or not, this one right here was like a DIY kit from Five Below. So I thought it turned out really great and it made me think, okay, maybe I can probably do this. So for this project, I was going big because I had a craft exchange coming up and so I had to make a number of projects. Our theme this time was national parks and so I had a big idea on how I was gonna make a ticket box so you put all of your tickets in for when you're going to a national park. And then kind of my key part of the project didn't work, but that's a story for another day. I promise I will share it for you. However, the box, I had a whole box full of cigar boxes. And so I was like, well, let's try paint pouring on the top of a cigar box. Should be easy enough, right? But I had never done paint pouring, so it was super intimidated. And I've watched a bunch of videos and it seemed so simple, but I just felt like I was gonna mess it up. So I actually did two projects that I wanna show you. The one at the end, I'm really excited about, and I'm gonna go back and get some more supplies and make some more of those because it was super fun. And I think you'd love it. It'd probably make a really good, maybe Christmas gift. So, all right, stay tuned. Let's check it all out. Okay, so before you get started with the boxes, you'll find out when you're when you have a big collection of cigar boxes that some of them, their logos are kind of indented in. So like this is kind of embossed with some gold. Well, if you spray it then, or cover it with paint, it's going to fill in those ridges, right? So then you're gonna have their labels showing through. And I didn't want that. I didn't want any branding on the boxes. I wanted them to just be flat. So this is just some joint compound that I'm spreading onto the boxes so that we can make sure that the whole surface is smooth. And I'm going to do that on the backs and the sides and the bottoms. Just anywhere that you've got sort of an embossed type of logo or, you know, label of any sort on these boxes just to kind of spread it out and or smooth it out just to kind of smooth it out. And you want to let this set overnight um, just to make sure that it's really in there good. Once you've let all that joint compound dry. The best thing to do next is to rub it with some sandpaper. And I just used a 220 sandpaper and I didn't rub it a whole lot because you don't want to rub it out of the box. <laughs> you know? So don't, don't go crazy with it, but just give it a nice gentle sanding so that you can make the top of the surface as seamless and as smooth as possible. It's going to be dusty after you sandpaper it. So you probably want to take, I just use a damp paper towel and wiped off all the extra dust from it but just give it a good brush with the sandpaper until it feels like it's smooth to the touch and then just blow off what you can and then gently wipe with a damp paper towel so you can make sure that you get all of that off and then let that dry completely and then you're ready for your next step okay so once I've gotten all of the ridges smoothed out with the joint compound then it's okay to go ahead and spray the boxes as these boxes right here they don't have any indentations in them so you can just go ahead and spray them straight away and cover up any of the labels or anything that's flat on the box you want to make sure everything is flat and this is just a rust-oleum two times coverage uh, spray and espresso i love this color kind of reminds me I guess it really does remind me of espresso <laughs> or maybe chocolate. I like both. So, okay. So the next step is pretty simple. You are going to take your painter's tape and just cover all of the sides of the box. You don't need to worry about the top because I, that's where you're going to do your paint pouring. You don't need to worry about the bottom because I mean, you could cover the box on the bottom. I did have a little bit of drippage, but it wasn't that difficult to deal with. So next you're going to set out some 
I use little Dixie cups for this. You're going to set them out so you can set the box up on top of it and get your paint ready. I'm using the Deco Art Fluid Art Ready to Pour paints, and I thought these worked really great. And this part is fun. You are just squeezing the paints into your cup. Now, I had like a million of these little paper Dixie cups. It's probably better to use plastic, but I had these and I was able to use them as to lift up my project as well. You definitely want to lift up the project because if you don't, when the paint pours over the side, it will pool around the box and it's going to stick to whatever you have on the table and or if you have it resting on you know like old boxes or whatever anyway you run the risk of it chipping or getting really messy on the bottom so as you can see you're just going to pour the paint into these cups and just kind of layer it you know you can i've seen some people like pour everything in from the side like you're filling up a foamy beer or you could just do it in the center um, I did a little bit of both for each one I wanted to see kind of how it would come out and the more you layer it the more uh, you know the thicker your squeeze of paint in there the bigger the stripes of color I guess you'd say and the if you do a smaller squish it's gonna have less so I played with this a couple of different ways one couple boxes I did poured a whole bunch in the middle and tried to kind of rotate it so that the paint would all spread and then I kind of landed on this technique where you just make little pools um, all over the box and then turn the box to let it spread. This was actually my preferred way of doing it but I'm, I think it's just personal taste whatever one you like the best. These little cups they tend to be like I filled them probably two-thirds of the way full and it seemed to be the perfect amount to cover a cigar box for me i i, I liked this amount i again i'm not an expert but this was my first go around i feel like i'm an expert after doing so many of these but that's what i found to be to work so then as you've got your box with paint on it you just kind of rotate it around i would recommend maybe wearing some gloves with this because the paint is it does stick to your hands <laughs> and it is a little bit messy as you can see for my tables i just covered them with trash bags and that worked for me so after you've rotated it all around you're also going to set it up on your little risers that you have so that it can continue to spread and expand and kind of drip off the sides and I can tell you, I was super intimidated with this project. I was convinced I was going to mess it up somehow. It was going to be ugly. It was going to be a mess. And none of them turned out bad, honestly. I loved every single one of them. And it was really fun to do. So here they are as they're drying. You can see they're still kind of shiny. It does tend to dry a little thinner than you see it on the boxes right here so that it does kind of settle into it, I guess, and sort of drip off the side. Now to finish mine, I used a polycrylic in a crystal clear, and I this is a matte finish. I think if I were going to do this again, I probably would have done it with a high gloss finish, but I was, at the time when I was planning this project, I was planning on putting something on top of the box was, that was a little more rustic, and so I didn't want that high gloss kind of lacquer shine. And once it was completely dry, I let it dry overnight. And in fact, I did it outside in my garage for overnight. And then once I felt like I could touch it without it being too tacky, I moved it inside because it's been so humid here. And I hope that it would kind of speed up the drying process. So then comes the fun part is taking off the painter's tape. And this was super easy to do. As you can see from some of my boxes, they did drip all the way over to the other side. And the painter's tape actually pulled off a little bit of the paint. That's totally okay. I'm gonna go back and with my spray paint and just touch that up. This is actually a really satisfying part of the project. <laughs> I really enjoyed this part a lot, pulling the painter's tape off and kind of seeing how the project was coming together. It was That was kind of fun. Um, do be careful when you're pulling it off because you can kind of chip a little bit of it. And if you see that it's pulling on the top of the box, you want to make sure to maybe use like an X-Acto knife or something just to make sure it doesn't pull any of the paint off the actual surface of the top of the box. You only want it to pull it off of the sides. Okay, so to kind of finish these boxes, I wanted to do something on the inside. So I just took some pretty scrapbook paper that I thought would go with it 
and used Mod Podge and decoupage the inside of the boxes. You could do so many different things on the inside if you wanted to. You could actually also spray the inside so they match the outside. That's another thing I probably would have done if I did this again was to make sure I sprayed the inside of the box so it was also it had some continuity from the inside to the outside and then I probably wouldn't have had to put the decoupage paper in there but I actually kind of like that too so and so here they are all together and as you can see everyone is completely unique and then you can see inside I got a little forestry paper for these because it was national park themed and these were originally intended to be like a ticket box so you could put all of your national park tickets in there whenever you went to go visit a new national park you would just keep it in there and maybe put a couple of your favorite photos or whatever so it'd be kind of a memory box of national parks and these colors i chose because they reminded me of the colors of nature so guys now i got brave after i had done this and i decided to try and do a paint pour of a glass bowl <laughs> This is a bowl that I picked up at Daiso, Daiso um, for $1.50 and I loved the swirly designs on it. I thought it was going to be perfect. So knowing that you'd be able to see the inside of the bowl, I went ahead and just sprayed a primer on the outside. Also, I was worried about the paint maybe not sticking evenly to it. So I thought maybe this would also help it adhere to it a little bit. So I just gave it a, a light coat of primer and I just did plain white. So that's what you would see on the other side. And then, so after I let that dry, I was ready to do the paint pour just like I did on top of the cigar boxes. So I was a little bit nervous about this, but okay. So for this one, you several cups to set it up, I knew weren't going to work. So I tried to create a little tower to give it enough height underneath it. So it wouldn't touch the cardboard that I was working on. I will say I had to keep adding to this so that it was up high enough because even when it drips off, you know, it it can drip off for, you know, you want it to be raised up for about an inch above whatever your surface is just to give it enough room to be able to drip underneath it. So really I did the same process with this one. I used my Deco Art ready to pour fluid paint in the same colors and Actually, I used also a little bit of the leftover ones from the Five Below kit because I just had a smidge left of each one of those and I didn't really want to save the bottles, but I wanted to feel like I used it all. So I went ahead and used those up as well. So just like before, I took my cup and started layering in my different colors. And this time, I guess I had maybe four, maybe eight or nine different colors and just sort of kept layering them in. Now for this one, I did try and kind of use that beer approach to um, have everything sort of lined up on the side of the cup as I was filling it and making my layers. So then you just put your bowl back on top of your little stand there and you get to pouring. And because I had a lazy Susan, so I thought that maybe this would help me as I was trying to pour instead of trying to run around the table, I thought it might be a little bit easier. And I covered it with Glad Wrap, clean wrap, just to kind of protect it because I didn't want it to have permanent paint all over it. And so I just kept doing the pour and I thought, well, maybe if I spin it a little bit, that would help to maybe spread the paint around. And it did stretch out. I felt like maybe it wouldn't, I was afraid with the tower and kind of holding it up to get the paint to pour along the edges, I felt like I was asking for disaster. I felt like it was going to fall over and topple. So I went ahead and started another little cup of paint and poured it on top as well, just to get it to really get full coverage on those edges where it seemed like it maybe might not stick. So after I got done with it, I should have been wearing gloves, but again, got my hands covered in paint, but just sort of grabbed it and moved it to another location so that I could let it dry. So I made a little tower on the ground actually, and let it dry over there with a fan on it overnight. Okay. And once it was done, it was totally dry. I was totally thrilled with it, but I knew that the edges were going to be a little bit messy and I accidentally touched the inside of the bowl. So the great thing about a glass bowl is you can just scrape off the paint from the inside, but to really finish it off, I did the edge with a gold paint pen 
just to kind of finish it where the paint came together on the edges because it wasn't totally even depending on how it would drip off. Now this right here has not been sprayed with any kind of sealer, but I think I will use a high gloss sealer on this because I think it would just shine and be amazing. So definitely try these out and let me know how it goes.